Hello and good evening. Uh, welcome, everyone. Are you able to hear me tonight? Can you hear me well tonight? Yes, good evening, teacher. Teacher. yes I can hear you. Great. Nice to say hello. Uh, it's the ending of a week, right? And I hope you have you have been successful enough in this week that just ended today. Well, um, I'm very happy to say hello to everyone. Tell me, how was your week? Or what is your expectation for this coming weekend? If you ask me, I felt that this week is very long. <laughs> I feel like it's a very long week for some reason. And my expectation for this weekend is I'm working tomorrow. I'm working tomorrow in the morning. I'm teaching a class, a basic class. And on Sunday, I'm having my day off. And maybe I'm going to do some laundry or, or you know, hang out with some friends. What about you, my dear students? Are you cold, teacher? It's cold around here. Isn't it cold where you are? Uh, no, uh, here, no. Uh, where do you live, teacher? I live, well, right now, I am in um, Chalatenango. Uh... But um, <laughs> yeah, normally I live in Mexicanos, San Salvador. Where are you? Uh... I am, I, uh, I live in Ciudad Delgado, San Salvador. Delgado City? Yes. That is hot, huh? It's hot over there. Yes, a lot of sure. <laughs> <laughs> so that's why you wonder, why am I wearing a, a hoodie? So, and the rest of my students, how, how's it going? How are you doing tonight, huh? I am good, teacher. Byron, what's new, Byron? What's your what's your expectation for this weekend coming up? Mm, I don't have a, no. I am good for the weekend. So you don't have any plans yet? No. But I am celebrating a birthday. You are celebrating a birthday tomorrow or this weekend. That's good. That's good. On this in this weekend is uh, yesterday. Yesterday, well, yesterday is past. Uh, this weekend is future. Oh, okay. Okay. Tomorrow. 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 Yes, Saturday. Tomorrow. Oh, yes. Nice. 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 So, so get me get me a piece of cake for me. Okay. Save me some cake. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Hey, let's go ahead and um, go over the attendance real quick so we can get started with this one hour class and take advantage of the time as much as we can. Let me ask Ana Julia Mayorga Rodriguez. Present teacher. Excellent. How are you, miss? Fine, Great. Byron Eduardo Mundo Medrano. Brian, did you say Brian? Teacher? Brian, Brian, oh, Brian yeah, Eduardo I'm, Mundo I'm Medrano. Here, All right, good, 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 good. Carlos Fernando Rivas Portillo, Portillo Rivas, I'm sorry. I hear teacher. Great. Let me see. I have um, Carlos Eduardo Portillo Rivas. Okay, now Claudia. Beatriz Ramirez de Moss. Damaris Merari Marroquín Rivas. Present teacher. Daisy Magdalena Hernández Hernández. Present teacher. Okay, Elizabeth del Carmen Mejía Torres. Elmer Mauricio um, Salas Rojas. I'm here, teacher. Already, sir, thank you. Elvia Sofía Pérez Castaneda. Emma Jamilet Coreas, de Ma Coreas Madrid. Giselle Cecilia Osorto Rivera. 
Josie Beth, Abigail Miranda Chavez. Here, teacher. Perfect. Iris Rosario Benitez de Hernandez. Joel Ulises Menjibar Mendoza. Jose Neftali Cibrian Hernandez. I'm here, teacher. Already. Karen Elizabeth Garcia Carpio. I'm here, teacher. Okay, welcome to class, Karen. And Kimberly Vanessa Avalos Serrano. Manuel Alejandro Varias Arce. Mar Bailey Jocelyn Aleman de Santos. Present teacher. All right, welcome to class. Monica Marisol Ramos Flores. Um, Ouch, that sounds a little robotic. Let me decrease my volume. Um, that sounds a little robotic. Maybe you have internet connection um, issues, but I can hear you are in the class, Natalie. Thank you for being there for the class. Uh, now, Nelson Rolando Melgar. I'm here, teacher. Thank you. Oscar Eduardo Guardado Delgado. I am here, teacher. All right, welcome, Oscar. How about Pablo Herreyes Pineda Alvarenga? I'm here, teacher. All right, Pablo. Patricia Veronica Salazar de Morales. Present, teacher. All right. René David Calderón Peñate. Sandra Janet Vasquez Cortez. Good evening, present. All right, welcome to class, Sandra. And Sara Maria Molina Cubillas. Okay, I'm sorry about that. Saul Arnulfo Mejibar Crespin. I'm here, teacher. All right, perfect. Thank you guys for your punctuality. Let me now go to the platform. We're going to work as much as we can today. Uh, as you know, the classes are from Mondays to Thursdays, uh, but today is an exception, right? Uh, you usually don't have classes on Fridays, but thank you so much for uh, making some time for the class today. Let's go over the objective. Today we're going to guess, we'll develop skills in guessing, right? Meaning from context, we're gonna have a reading and that's actually a platform exercise. Actually, I can't do that for you or with you, let's say, let me see. Okay, yeah, we're going uh, objective two, actually. I'm sorry, guys. So this is something you gotta do yourself, right? Tomorrow or during the weekend. And now we're gonna go to this objective. It's infinitives and gerunds for uses and purposes. Infinitives and gerunds. Let me take this from here, okay. Let's go ahead and watch the video that is related to Hi, welcome. Join us in this new section. We're about to explain that we can describe how something is used by either an infinitive or a gerund. Notice the meaning is the same. Pay attention. Sorry about that. This is start over. Hi, welcome. Join us in this new section. We're about to explain that we can describe how something is used by either an infinitive or a gerund. Notice the meaning is the same. Pay attention and stay with us. Infinitives and gerunds for uses and purposes. Infinitives. 
I use my computer to send emails. Computers are often used to pay bills. Gerunds. I use my computer for sending emails. Computers are often used for paying bills. As said in our intro video, we will study infinitives and gerunds to express use and purposes. Keep in mind the meaning doesn't change. What changes is the structure. So let's go over the explanation on the difference between the two forms. With an infinitive, we must use to plus verb. Example, I use my cell phone to call my friends. To call my friends is the purpose. With a gerund, we must use for plus verb plus ing. Example, I use my cell phone for calling my friends. For calling my friends is the purpose. Notice on both examples, the purpose or use is the same. It is also important for you to notice when using infinitives, we must use the particle to before the verb. And when we use gerunds, we use the word for. You can't say, I use my computer to sending emails, nor I use my computer for send emails. Do you have any comment before we analyze this? No. Do you happen to have any comment, any question before we get into the analyst? Can you repeat it? The video? Okay. Hold on. Watch your audio, please, guys. New section. We're about to explain that we can describe how something is used by either an infinitive or a gerund. Notice the meaning is the same. Pay attention and stay with us. Infinitives and gerunds for uses and purposes. Infinitives. I use my computer to send emails. Computers are often used to pay bills. Gerunds. I use my computer for sending emails. Computers are often used for paying bills. As said in our intro video, we will study infinitives and gerunds to express use and purposes. Keep in mind the meaning doesn't change. What changes is the structure. So let's go over the explanation on the difference between the two forms. With an infinitive, we must use to plus verb. Example, I use my cell phone to call my friends. To call my friends is the purpose. With a gerund, we must use for plus verb plus ing. Example, I use my cell phone for calling my friends. For calling my friends is the purpose. Notice on both examples, the purpose or use is the same. It is also important for you to notice when using infinitives, we must use the particle to before the verb. And when we use gerunds, we use the word for. You can't say, I use my computer to sending emails, nor I use my computer for send emails. Okay, so uh, pretty much the meaning is the same. It's just uh, two different ways to express one idea. Uh, as long as we manage both ways, you can choose either or, right? You can choose infinitives or you can use gerunds to express your ideas. Uh, it says that, what is easier for you? People sometimes make the mistake of, of putting two verbs together, right? Without any preposition or, or ing. Let's see this using infinitives. I use my computer to send emails. So to send emails is practically the purpose. Computers are often used to pay bills. To pay bills is the purpose. Mm -hmm. For example, you may say uh, you study English to get better opportunities in your future. So to get better opportunities in your future is the purpose. Are you able to provide us with one example using infinitive? Um, I like to play soccer teacher. 
Okay, to play soccer is the purpose. Excellent, thank you. Somebody else? You need to pay attention in class. Okay, to pay attention in class is the purpose. Excellent. I need three examples more. I need to learn English. Okay, I need to learn English. Okay, to learn English is the purpose. Thank you. Go ahead. I, I use my car to travel with my family. Okay, to travel with your family is definitely uh, the best purpose. And the last example, who's going to say it? I don't need to send my homework. <laughs> okay, to send your homework is the purpose. Now, can you tell can you tell examples still using infinitives but in third person? For instance, um, my brother needs to clean his house soon. And she needs to dance more. She <laughs> okay, to dance more, it's the purpose. Thank you, well done, good job on the third person. Next. I use my computer to meet with my coworkers. Okay, that's a personal example. That's totally right. Are you able to say a third person example though? Like my boss always tells me to be on time. Be on time is the purpose. And the third person tells. So two things to keep in mind. Are you able to say three more examples? Go ahead. My son used the computer to play. To play is the purpose? Games. To play games. Okay, to play games is the purpose. Though, yes. uh, what happened with the third person? Use is the verb. Uh, okay, uses. There you go. There you go. Don't forget. My son uses. Uh-huh, because you use. I use, but your son uses. Okay. Excellent. One more okay. example. Go ahead. He needs to practice English. I got you a third person. Yes, needs. To learn English is the purpose. Good job, guys. Let's go with Jared's. Hi, teacher. Okay, last example. Go ahead. Um, the Lempa River to need... No, the Lempa River needs to rain. Needs to needs to get needs to get uh, rain. Needs to get rain. Yes, definitely. To get rain is the purpose and needs. I, I caught your third person. Okay, if you can stress your uh, pronunciation on the third person, guys, even better. Let's go to gerunds. Um, with gerunds, we're gonna depend on the preposition for. Okay, uh, this is a rule. Okay, every time you use a verb, okay, you need to use the ing form when you use the preposition for, for sending, for for paying, for going, for doing, etc. Here are the examples. I use my computers for sending emails. So for sending emails, is still a purpose. Is the only difference is that you're using the preposition for plus the gerund. And computers are often used for paying bills, for paying bills is the purpose. So be very careful with for, and don't forget that you need to use um, ing verb, okay? Can we try, let me see, I wanna think of an example. I will say, I like, I like to, I'm gonna use both, no, I'm gonna say this, I save money I, I sometimes save some of my money for going on, on, on a good vacation. Mm -hmm. For going on a good vacation is my purpose. Can you say your own examples? Go ahead. Me, teacher. Go ahead. For example, it's a pleasure to hear, to hear, uh, to hear you uh, dance for calling. 
Thanks for calling. For calling. Definitely. Thanks for calling. Excellent. Somebody else? My teacher. Go ahead. And I play soccer for doing exercise. Uh, okay, perfect. Just, just, just let's polish exercise. Say exercise. Exercise. There you go. Yeah. You play soccer for doing exercise. Excellent. Good job. Somebody else wants to try. For example, he needs a car for going to work. Correct. He needs a car for going to work and for being on time, right? For getting or for making his money. Yeah. So on and so forth. I think this is very uh, simple. Okay. This is very simple. And you can definitely use it on a daily basis. Let's move on. We're going to go to the next objective, and that is notice in practice the stress in words with more than two syllables. Okay, let's take a look at that. Yes. Part A, pronunciation, syllable stress. Part A, listen and practice. Notice which syllable has the main stress. Satellite. Internet. Photograph. Invention. Assignment. Computer. CD-ROM. Engineer. Entertain. Where is the stress in these words? Can you pronounce them? Yeah, but before we do that, listen and practice. Notice which syllable has the main stress. Satellite. Internet. Photograph. Okay, so this, for, this first column of words, of course, they have three syllables, all of them, right? Three syllables. But where is the stress? Is it on the first, the second, or in the third syllable? In the first. No, in the third. You sure? For example, satellite. Repeat, guys, satellite. In the first one. Ethernet. Ethernet. Computer. Ethernet. Internet. And photograph. 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 Where Photograph. is the stress? It's in the first syllable. Okay. At the beginning. Yes, sir. It's in the first syllable. Ethernet. Repeat, guys. Ethernet. 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 Photograph. 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 Repeat. Satellite. 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 Okay. How about the second? How about the second column? Invention. Mm -hmm. Invention. Okay. What? Invention. Where is the stress? Is it in the first one? In the second? In the third? The second. Is at the middle. In the second. In the second syllable. Okay. In the second syllable, it says invention. Repeat, guys. Invention. 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 Okay. Um. Repeat. Assignment. 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 And computer. 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 Okay. Now the third column, the third column, where is the stress? Do you notice where is the stress? First, second, or third? Third one. CD ROM. CD ROM. CD ROM. CD ROM. CD ROM. 
Okay. City Ram. City Ram. City Ram. Engineer. 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 I'm sorry about that. Um, entertain. 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 Okay. Entertain. Perfect. Perfect. Let's move on, guys. Let's move on. Invention. Let's continue Assignment. with the last part. Engineer. Entertain. Where is the stress in these words? Can you pronounce them? Very good. Can you repeat with me? Languages, telephone, transmission, robotics, understand, VCR. Where is the stress in these words? Can you? Okay, let's check. Where is the stress in those words? Pronounce them. The first one. Languages. 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 Okay, pronunciation. Languages. 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 Where is the stress? First, second, or third? Second. First. First. Understand. Languages. 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 Where? In the first. <laughs> in the language. first language. syllable. Land. Languages. Language. Yeah. Languages. Language. Language. It's in the first syllable. Next one. Understand. 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 Where is the stress? The thirst. At the end. Understand. 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 Second. Second. Okay, we have a dilemma there, okay? There. Understand. 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 First syllable. First syllable. Okay, next. What about this one? How do you pronounce this? Robotics. 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 Where is the stress? In the second. Excellent. In the second syllable. Robot. Robotics. Okay, robotics. next robotics. one. Telephone. 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 Where is the stress? The first. Yes. Telephone. Yes, in the first yes. syllable. Telephone. Okay. How about transmission? Transmission. 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 Where is the stress? First one. Excellent. Excellent. The last one. BCR. 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 Where is the stress? In the, third, the second one. Second. In the second. Listen. No. BCR. BCR. In the last. In the last yeah. one. Yeah. BCR. <laughs> yeah. It's in the last one. All right. The stress is kind of important because it helps you with your pronunciation, right? Very good. Can you repeat with me? Languages, telephone, 
We got a mistake Trans on this one. Look, we got a mistake. Understand. Yeah. Repeat. Languages. 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 We got this right. Telephone. Telephone. We got this right. Telephone. Transmission. It was in the middle. Transmission. 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 We got this right. Robotics. We got this right. Robotics. Robotics. Okay, this one. Unders understand time. Understand. And we got this right. BCR. 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 Nice BCR. job, guys. Nice job with your pronunciation. BCR. Let's go over the next objective right here. We're going to use imperatives. Imperatives, okay? Conversation also. We're going to practice the conversation using the cell phone. We're going to notice the imperatives and infinitives for giving suggestions. Let's watch this video real quick. And then we will discuss as usual. Hi again, listen to the audio program. Please pay attention because at the end of the conversation, I will ask you some questions. Get ready. Listen and practice. Can I borrow your phone to call my boss? I can't believe you still don't have a cell phone. Here you go. Thanks. Now, what do I need to do? First of all, be sure to turn it on. And don't forget to dial the area code. Okay, I can see the number, but I can't hear anything. That's because you haven't pressed the call button. Oh, good. It's ringing. Try not to get too excited. You'll probably get his voicemail. Hi, this is Joe Jones. You're right. It's a recording. Sorry, take your call right Make sure now. to hit the end button, or else you'll leave our conversation on his voicemail. Ready? Who owns the phone? Who are they calling? What's the first thing to do? What should the woman press? If you're not sure about the answers, you may listen to the audio program as many times as you need to. Good luck. Okay, so we have some questions right here, guys. Make sure to hit the end button or else you'll leave here. Ready? Who owns the phone? Question number one, who owns the phone? Um, I guess his boss. His spouse? Boss. Uh, boss. Uh, yes, his boss? Yes. Okay, okay, okay. We have next question. We're going to verify these questions. Who are they calling? Who are they calling? Next question. What's the first thing to do? And what's the first thing to do when you're making a phone call? What should the woman press? What should the woman press? That's the next question. If you're not sure about the... And we're going to watch it once again. All right. And we're going to answer those questions at the end. Ready? Here we go. Hi again. Listen to the audio program. Please pay attention because at the end of the conversation, I will ask you some questions. Get ready. Listen and practice. Can I borrow your phone to call my boss? I can't believe you still don't have a cell phone. Here you go. Thanks. Now, what do I need to do? First of all, be sure to turn it on. And don't forget to dial the area code. Okay, I can see the number, but I can't hear anything. That's because you haven't pressed the call button. Oh, good. It's ringing. Try not to get too excited. You'll probably get his voicemail. Hi, this is Joe Jones. You're right. It's a recording. Sorry, take your call right Make now. sure to hit the end button, or else you'll leave our conversation on his voicemail. Ready? Who owns the phone? Okay, so who is the owner of the cell phone, guys? Richard. Richard is what? Or Richard? How can you express that? Can you express that? Richard? Yes, Richard. Richard what? He's the owner. Correct. Richard is the owner. Like that. Richard is 
D. Owner. Richard. Richard is the owner. Is there any is, is there any other way to express that? Is uh, it's Richard's uh, cell phone? Correct. It's Richard's cell phone. Okay. Any other way? Any other way? The owner is the guy. <laughs> I like that one. I like that one. Good job. Okay, we're going to use the verb uh, own. Okay. And we're going to say Richard owns. Richard owns the phone. Okay. Let's go to the next question. Who are they calling? Who are they calling? Who are they calling? They are calling of uh, his boss. Somewhat correct. Her, her, her phone. Her boss. Her correct. Boss. Correct. correct. Her boss. They're calling her boss. It's correct, guys. They're calling her, her boss. Her boss. Okay, cool. Okay, excellent. Next question. What's the first thing to do? What's the first thing to do when you're making a phone call? Make sure to turn it down, to turn it off. Turn down. I'm sorry, can you repeat that? We need to turn down the cell phone. Turn on. Yes, turn on. Yes, we need to turn on the cell phone. That's right. You need to turn on the cell phone. Next. The, fir the first thing is mark the number, the, the telephone number. Okay. In that case, the verb is going to be dial. Okay. Dial. Mm -hmm. D-I. Let me see. Dial. Dial. Dial the number. Dial the number, okay? One second. Uh huh. Dial the number. Dial. Okay. Oh. Yeah. What should the woman press? What should the woman press? She should press the call button. Awesome. She should press the call. Call button. Button. Okay. Okay. The call button. She should press. She should press. Okay. She should press the call button. Next. If you're not sure about the answer. That's it. Well done, guys. Well done. You definitely work very hard. I can see that. Let's go to the next objective. It says, use imperatives and infinitives, still giving suggestions. So far, so good. So far, so good. Let's move on. Let's watch this one now. There you go. Hello everyone, before you watch the video, I want to remind you that imperatives are commands and they don't need a subject. Also, for giving suggestions, we will use an imperative as well as an infinitive. Stay around for more explanation. Imperatives and infinitives for giving suggestions. Be sure to turn it on. Don't forget to dial the area code. Make sure to hit the end button. Remember to pay the bill every month. Try not to talk for too long. This is how we'll use imperatives and infinitives for giving suggestions. When using an imperative, the subject is never mentioned and they always begin with a verb. And as said on the previous explanation, the infinitive is to plus a verb. Now let's think about a situation. 
These two kids are new to their English class and they say, we don't understand English. So let's give them a suggestion. We can say, study your verbs. But this sounds more like an instruction. So to make it a bit more polite and to actually sound like a suggestion, we may add, make sure to study your verbs. Check at the beginning we have no subject and then a verb, which means it's an imperative. Make sure. Moving forward to our infinitive to study. So when we put an imperative with an infinitive together, we can come up with a great suggestion. We will leave you now with some common expressions we use as imperatives to give suggestions. Be sure, make sure, don't forget, remember, try. Let's make examples using these expressions. Be sure to practice with your friends. Make sure to use a dictionary. Don't forget to think in English. Remember to do your English homework. Try to pronounce properly. Now read these suggestions. Be sure to speak in your native language. Make sure to forget your dictionary. Don't forget to stay quiet in class. Remember to translate into your native language. Try to mispronounce the words. You will agree with me that they are not good suggestions to give an English student. Therefore, we need to add the word not to make them positive suggestions. So the word not will go between the imperative and the infinitive. Now it is your turn. Ready to come up with examples of your own? Try it and write them on our discussion box. Okay, we're going to discuss, we're going to discuss this a little bit. Be sure to turn it on. Don't forget to dial the area. Something that they mention is that we don't use a subject when you give imperatives. There's no, ne there's no need for you to use a subject. Okay, be sure to turn, to turn it on. Be sure to turn it on. It's like a command. It's like an instruction. Don't forget to dial. Don't forget. Don't forget. It's like uh, a guidance, a suggestion, a recommendation. Make sure to make sure to hit the end button. Make sure to hit the end button. And remember, remember to remember to pay the bell before the month. It's like an instruction, right? Try not to. I like this one. It's like uh, negative, but in reality, it's positive, right? Try not to talk for too long. Try not to. Try not to give up. Try not to give up. The code. Make sure to hit the end button. Okay. Remember. Infinitive is to. Now, we use infinitive to plus verb. Infinitive to plus verb, and the verb goes in the base form. To make, to mop for example. Plus a verb. Now let's think about a situation. These two kids are new to their English I like the class situation and they say, we don't understand English. So let's give them a suggestion. We can say, study your verbs. But this sounds more like an instruction. Yeah. Study your verbs is like a command. Study your verbs, like clean your house, uh, do this, do that. Uh, but you got to make it more polite. Using, for example, make sure. So to make it a bit more polite and to actually sound like a suggestion, we may add, make sure to study your verbs. Check at the beginning we have no subject and then a verb, which means it's an imperative. Make sure. Moving forward to our infinitive to study. So mm -hmm. when we put an imperative with an infinitive together, we can come up with a great suggestion. Imperative with infinitive. So make sure is an imperative. Mm -hmm. Make sure is an, an imperative. Try is an imperative. Then what do you need? You need the preposition to, easy, and you need the uh, We will leave you now with some form. common expressions we use. As so for example, these are uh, imperatives. Be sure, make sure, I like this one. Make sure is very common. Repeat, make sure. Make sure to, you follow the infinitive. Be sure to, yeah? Make sure to, don't forget to, yeah? Remember to, and try to, okay? Can you give examples using this? 
For example, in your job, in your house, what instructions do you hear? Uh -huh. Me, teacher. Go ahead, please. Don't forget to close the door. Wait, let me see who has... Okay, I got it. Can you repeat the example, please? Don't forget to close the door. Excellent. Don't forget to close the door. Now, if you put please, that's even more polite. Don't forget to close the door, please. All right? I have an example, teacher. Please provide it. Go ahead. Okay. Remember to eat in the morning. Definitely. Don't another uh, don't forget to do exercise every day exercise 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 uh-huh correct correct do you have something with try try to try to drink uh, sleep uh, early okay try to sleep early okay try to go to bed try to go to bed early try to go to bed. Mm -hmm. Try to clean the house. Yeah. <laughs> Try to clean the house before I come back. Huh? <laughs> All right. Try to learn how to speak English. Try to learn how to speak English. Try. Try to learn. Try to participate. Come on. Try to eat. Try to eat uh, more vegetables. 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 Or, or veggies. Veggies. Best yes, best. definitely. Move on, move on. Okay. Let's see this one. Let me let me try to work on the mistakes she was she was telling. Okay. Try to do exercise. Try to do exercise. Okay. Okay, look at this. Try These to ones clean your house. Try to clean your house. Common expressions. Be sure to practice with your friends. Be sure to practice. Make sure to use a dictionary. Don't forget to think in English. Right. Try Don't to forget to think in English. Properly. Remember to do your English homework. Try to pronounce These properly. are affirmatives. Now read these suggestions. Now the negatives, we're going to use not before the infinitive. For example, be sure not to speak in your native language, like be sure not to speak in Spanish in the class. That is not helpful. Make sure not to forget your dictionary, not to forget. Mm -hmm. Don't forget not to stay quiet, not to stay quiet in class. Yeah, active participation. Okay, for someone uh, that is going, hey, let's put a case, let's put a case. What if I ask you, uh, guys, I'm going to have a job interview on Monday. So I'm very nervous right now. Try Can you give me- Your English skills. Try to practice your English skills. Can you try to use this, this, this structure? Well, negative. Don't be afraid. Okay, don't be afraid. Don't be afraid. Okay. Can you try to use be sure not Questions. to? Be sure. Make sure not to. Don't forget not to. Remember not to or try not to. Guys, if I'm going to an interview, a job interview on Monday, For example, try not to be nervous, right? During the interview. Try not to be, try not to be, uh, uh, speak more. <laughs> quiet. quiet. Try yeah. not to be, try not quiet. to be quiet. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you, example, thank you. Go ahead. Be sure not to be late. Be sure not to be late, definitely. Be sure not to be, not to be late. Punctuality is a must. Thank you. Good job. Somebody has one negative example. Uh, 
try to uh, be sure not to do noise in the class not to do not to make not to make okay not to make noise excellent guys great job let's change the scenario one more time let's change the scenario say guys say guys um i am going to uh start i am going to start a new relationship yes i'm very happy i'm going to start a new relationship uh, with my girlfriend with my girlfriend so what is what is uh, something you can tell me using uh, imperative and using infinitive as my friends? Mm -hmm. um, be sure not uh, be jealous. Uh, okay, be sure not to be. Be sure not to, not be. to be jealous. Oh my God, that's difficult, Brian. <laughs> okay, next, next, next. Me be sure. Go ahead. Make sure don't forget the chocolate, the chocolate. Okay. Make sure or don't forget. Uh, don't forget. Don't forget. Now you need you need the infinitive. Don't forget to to give her flower, for example. Yes, sir. Don't forget to give her flowers and chocolates. Excellent. Thank you for the advice, Arnulfo. Okay, you're an expert. You're an expert on these, huh? Next, next, next. Be sure to tell, tell her everything. Ooh, be sure to tell her everything. Look at this advice by Josh, yeah? <laughs> Honesty. Sincerely, okay. Somebody else, somebody else. Try to send, um, try to send message when you have time. Try to send her. Try to send her messages. Repeat, guys. Messages. Yes. Try to spend no, uh, uh, much, too much money. <laughs> Can you repeat? Can you repeat? That's interesting, Jose. Repeat. Try, try to spend uh, no much, uh, no much, uh, uh, too much money. <laughs> I got your idea. Try not to. Try not, try to. not to spend to. much money. Yes. <laughs> repeat, repeat, repeat. Try to. Try not to. Try not to spend uh, much money. Woohoo! You got it, Josh. <laughs> That's a very wise suggestion, guys. Not only for me, right? <laughs> <laughs> right. Let's go ahead and ask you for your attendance. Let's call the attendance real quick. Very productive hour of class, guys. You make it very interactive. Great participation. I'm very glad with all of your participation. If you don't participate in this class, you are in debt. Feel like you are in debt, like you own $1 million to the bank because participation is a must, okay? <clears throat> Let me call out, let me see, um, Ana Julia Mayorga Rodriguez. Present teacher. Still in class, great. Byron Rafael Avelar Aquino. Brian Eduardo Mundo Medrano. I'm here, teacher. Carlos Fernando Portillo Rivas. Present teacher. Claudia Beatriz Ramos de Mos. Tamaris Merari Marroquín Rivas. Daisy. Damaris, okay. I got it, Damaris. Thank you. Daisy Magdalena Hernández Hernández. Present teacher. Elizabeth del Carmen Mejía Torres. Present teacher. Elmer Mauricio Salas Rojas. Present teacher. Elvia Sofia Perez Castaneda. Ima Jamilet Corea Madrid. Present teacher. All 
right. Giselle Cecilia Osorto Rivera. Present teacher. Josibeth Abigail Miranda Chavez. Here, teacher. It is Rosario Benitez de, I'm sorry, Benitez de Hernandez. It is, okay, Joel Eulises Mengibar Mendoza. Present teacher. All right. Josue Neftali Cibrian Hernandez. I'm here, teacher. Excellent. Karen Elizabeth Garcia Carpio. Kimberly Vanessa Avalos Serrano. Missing in action. Manuel Alejandro Varias Arce. Marbelli Jocelyn Aleman de Santos. Present teacher. Okay, Marbelli, thank you. Monica Marisol Ramos Flores. I'm here, teacher. Okay, thanks, Monica. And Natalie Geraldine Flores Caldanas. Present. Nelson Rolando Melgar. Here, I am, teacher. Already. Oscar Eduardo Guardado Delgado. I am here, teacher. Present. My goodness, thank you. Uh, Paulo Reyes Pineda Alvarenga. I'm here, teacher. Okay. Patricia Veronica Salazar de Morales. <laughs> Ouch. Um, René David Calderón Peñate. Missing in action. Sandra Janet Vasquez Cortez. I'm here, teacher. I like that, Sandra. Thank you. And um, Sara Maria Molina Cubies. Missing in action. And Saul Arnulfo Menjivar Crespin. Present teacher. All right. All right. So what did you learn today? What did you learn today? Let me ask. What did you learn today? Somebody? What did you learn today? What did we practice tonight? What did we practice tonight? We practice imperative for suggestions. Yes, imperatives plus infinitives, right? For instance, okay, we have a chat. Uh, I have a problem, who's that? Biden, let me see, Biden, I think I have you. Byron. See, I got you, Byron. No problem. Guys, uh, tomorrow we have no class. So obviously, it's Saturday. I want to wish you a great weekend coming up. Uh, I hope you uh, try not to forget to, to practice your English. And there's no homework for you this weekend. I will see you until Monday at the same time. Okay? Okay, teacher. Okay. Okay, teacher. <laughs> Bye. Happy Bye. weekend to everyone. Be safe. Wear your face mask always, right? Don't forget. Maybe <laughs> Enjoy it. Thank Be you, safe. teacher. Happy weekend. Thank you. Thank you, teacher. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, you, teacher. Easy. Uh, nice. Keep healthy. Bye-bye. Don't eat too much bye, junk food, all right? Uh, Good night. That's delicious. <laughs> <laughs> Good night, everyone. Keep yourself safety. Bye bye. Bye bye. Good night. Bye. See you next week.